and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our second VDMA session. We have prepared for today four uh, lectures, and we're starting directly with um, Gabi Daniele. Gabi Daniele is uh, Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer by Cortigo. Cortigo, which is um, can demonstrate a variety of smart manufacturing wireless solutions throughout the factory for transport tracks and conveying system condition monitoring machine retrofit robotics smart machines tool and rotary tables carousel machine optimization and data collection I'm very glad to have you here and um, Mr. Daniel is going to present the topic IOLink wireless ultra reliable ultra reliable wireless connectivity for factory automation please the shop is floor, the, the floor is yours. Go ahead, thank you. Oh. Hello, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. <coughs> okay, so, so Thanks again, Miriam, for the introduction. And everyone, um, good morning, and uh, thank you for joining us today. <coughs> In today's uh, presentation, as Miriam mentioned, we're going to be focusing on IOLINK Wireless. IOLINK Wireless is actually an industrial standard wireless communication uh, protocol that was defined specifically for factory automation to meet the industrial uh, requirements. And um, the focus of this presentation, as mentioned here, is going to be on the ultra-reliability in order to have wireless solutions that are fit for control and monitoring and for motion control solutions, reliability is a key factor. And we'll discuss that today along with explaining to you uh, what is IOLINK Wireless and how, to, how it works. <coughs> so let's start with the, with the gap. When a lot of people think about wireless solutions in the industrial space, you think about Wi-Fi, you think about 5G, you think about UHF solutions, LoRa solutions, but a lot of these solutions are used today for monitoring or for basic com uh, communication between uh, uh, computerized systems and such. These systems are not intended for control solutions. And for control solutions, you need to fit the requirements that are pretty much cable grade. Cable grade requirements means low latency, very high scalability to support a lot of sensors and devices and actuators on the machines. And of course, it means cable grade reliability. And a lot of the wireless solutions were not designed for this uh, cause. And IOLINK Wireless, which was launched in 2018, and it is part of the IOLINK consortium, so it's, it's an extension of IOLINK, which most of you may be acquainted <coughs> already with the uh, IOLINK standard. So IOLINK Wireless is actually part of that uh, standard. But what are the gaps that we're bridging? Today, can we have connectivity anywhere in the factory floor? And the answer is no. When we have uh, machine tooling uh, solutions on CNC machines, when we have fast motion solutions, not always can we connect cables to those solutions. And we need a wireless solution that can be used both for monitoring and for control. So we want to enable complete connectivity throughout the factory without exceptions. Another gap is footprint. A lot of times when we're putting in cables and we need to have the drag chains and all sorts of uh, mounting solutions and cables and such, it is expanding the footprint of the machine or the solution, whereas we want to be able to reduce the footprint as much as possible and remove the cables and the mounting accessories uh, that are required for that as much as possible. In addition, flexibility. Cables, in many cases, are limiting the flexibility. Now, they're being used everywhere, of course, because in many cases, there were not alternatives to get rid of those cables for the communication for control. <coughs> and the last one is maintenance reduction. As you know, robotic solutions and other solutions like slip rings or center axis of machines like carousels and rotary tables, they have many cables that are running that require maintenance. There's a lot of wear and tear, and that needs to be maintained. That creates uh, downtime, and of course, it creates costs for maintenance and operations. And by having IOLINK Wireless, which is designed to, to be both for control and monitoring, and pretty much with cable grade reliability, we can now bridge these gaps and enable these types of solutions. So let's talk a bit about the, uh, the standard. As we mentioned, it's part of the IOLINK uh, consortium, and it's an extension of the IOLINK standard. 
the IEC 61139-3, and it was designed specifically for control and monitoring. It has a latency of 5 milliseconds, and we'll talk about that and how it works in just a minute. It's very reliable, cable grade reliability as defined by the standard, by the IO-Link standard, which every solution that is IO-Link wireless needs to adhere to that, is 10 at the power of minus 9, the packet error rate, which pretty much is a million times more reliable than any other wireless solution, uh, conventional wireless solutions. And scalability. We'll show you some examples where, where we're talking about IO, as the name implies, IO-Link wireless, you can have hundreds of IOs on a single machine or in a single work cell area. So you need that scalability to support hundreds of devices. And all of that, along with, of course, the deterministic nature of it, is part of the IO-Link wireless standard, and it's part of the definitions and the requirements of this standard. <coughs> so let's talk about the reliability. Some of the things that exist in this protocol that enable us to get to this uh, kind of reliability. As we mentioned, we're measuring the packet error rate. 10 at the power of minus 9. If we take Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or UHF solutions, they are 10 at the power of minus 3. So this is literally a million times more reliable, which pretty much brings it to cable grade reliability. How is this achieved, this kind of reliability? First of all, we have frequency hopping. The channels on the, wi on the, on the spectrum of IOLINK Wireless, it uses the 2.4 gigahertz uh, spectrum. The channels are one megabyte channels, uh, so they're very small channels. And within every cycle or sub-cycle, there is frequency hopping. So we talked about a latency of 5 milliseconds. This means 1.6 milliseconds times three repetitions. Each 1.6 milliseconds, as can be seen here, is actually transmitted and received on a different frequency. So we have that frequency hopping, which is random and also enables you to get to that reliability whenever channels may be blocked. It also uses a GFSK modulation. I won't get into the details of that, but in the industrial space, as we all know, we have a lot of metallic uh, kinds of uh, uh, equipment and harsh conditions and a lot of noisy environments. This type of modulation enables you to deal very good with multipath effects and with effects of noise in the factory. And I'll show you in a second uh, an example of how reliable and what kind of noisy environments we can deal with in machines. <coughs> it also coexists. If you have Wi-Fi or other solutions in the area of the machines or the production lines, IOLINK Wireless is designed to coexist, and it enables block listing, so you won't be interfering with additional channels that may be in the area. For example, if you have channels that are Wi-Fi uh, in the area, it can coexist and not interfere with those channels. And in addition, it does not require line of sight. Because as you can see, these IOs, these sensors, these actuators, they need to be located on the machine, in the machine, and in all sorts of areas where you may not have line of sight. And this protocol does not require line of sight. And again, I'll show you an example in just a second. Again, okay, so we talked about the latency. The latency is five, 5 milliseconds. It is 1.6 milliseconds sub-cycle, which means the communication be back and forth between the master and the device is 1.6 milliseconds, and we have three repetitions also to ensure that reliability. And, it is, uh, and the, the communication is conducted in a way where the master is con communicating with all the devices in a multicast manner, and then one after another, there's communication back from the devices to the master, fully uh, authenticated process and fully acknowledged process, a deterministic uh, protocol. In addition, what you can see here is that a master um, has a, a number of defined units that it can connect to. Each track on a master, meaning each radio on a master, can communicate with up to eight devices. So as you can see here, if we look at the left-hand side, let's say we have a master with five tracks. The IOLINK wireless standard defines that each master can have up to five tracks. A track is actually a radio component. So a master with five tracks actually has five radio components, and each radio component can communicate with up to eight IO-Link wireless devices. So a master can communicate with up to 40 IO-Link wireless devices, okay, ensuring this low latency of five milliseconds and ensuring that uh, packet error rate or that reliability that I mentioned. So that is the deterministic nature also of this standard and protocol, that everything is very well-defined and tightened in a way that you cannot overload the system. 
In addition, what you can see here is an example of three masters where you may have more than 40 devices, 40, 80, 120 devices. And in this case, masters can also coexist and overlap, and there's a mechanism that enables them to coexist together in a single cell, which again is part of the definitions of the standard. So let's talk about scalability. Two examples here where scalability may be required. On the left hand, sa on the left -hand side, we have uh, robotic tools. As we know, some of these tools, whether automotive or pharmaceutical industries and such, so these tools at the end of arm of the robot can have in some cases 60, 70, or 80 IOs, a bunch of sensors and actuators all connected on the end of arm. As you can see today, you need a lot of cables and the mounting accessories that are running along those cables, right? We want to be able to eliminate all those cables and the mounting accessories. And by the way, they are cables that actually cost quite a bit because they have to be high torsion uh, resistant and also to be able to deal with the flexibility of the robotic arm. And by using uh, such a solution, we can actually eliminate those cables, but also it gets back to the scale. You can support 40, 60, 80 IOs on that single tool on the single end of arm without interference and everyone coexisting with one another. Another example here on the right hand side um, is the smart conveying systems. You see it a lot in automotive, you see it in logistics, you see it in the packaging industry. These are smart conveying systems where each mover is moving independently. You have systems with a single uh, machine where that can have 200 or 300 of these movers on each, uh, uh, on each machine or each work cell area. So again, these things are moving at four meters per second. So it's high speed, high motion. You want to be able to control grippers, vacuum pumps, valves, servo motors on those movers. And again, you want to be able to get to that scale. So IOLink Wireless, again, enables us to still maintain that peak performance of latency and reliability, but still having that scalability even in a single machine or a single work cell area. <coughs> and we mentioned that IOLink Wireless is part of the IOLink standard, which brings us that integration and interoperability uh, capability. So first of all, it's completely IOLink compatible. When you're connecting an IOLink wireless device, you get the whole IODD files and the IOLink structures of the devices, and it's automatically and seamlessly part of the system, completely compatible with IOLink. But in addition, it's important to mention, the path to IOLink wireless is not necessarily through IOLink. I don't need to have an IOLink device in order to turn it to IOLink wireless. You can actually have a digital device, an analog device, or an IOLink device. So pretty much any IO, any sensor or actuator can be turned into IOLink wireless. It is not only working with IOLink devices. <coughs> So let's talk about uh, how does this work now. We talked about the standard and what's defined in the standard. So we'll focus on two layers here, the device layer at the bottom and the master or control level um, at, the, at the center here. So at the device level, there are two ways to integrate IOLink wireless. One is with adapters, OK? Um, in the center of the uh, frame at the bottom, you can see an IOLink wireless bridge. It's that uh, greenish turquoise device over there. It looks like this. This is the size. And basically, what you do with this device, you're taking off-the-shelf components, off-the-shelf sensors or actuators, and connecting them to this bridge. It automatically and seamlessly, without any configuration or code changes on the device, turns them into IO-Link uh, wireless. Another example of such a device would be a multi-port hub. In this case, you can connect multiple devices multiple sensors, multiple actuators. They can be analog, digital, or IO-Link, and or IO-Link combination. And now I'm turning all of them into a single IO-Link wireless device. So this is interesting because we mentioned that a single master can support 40 devices, but essentially, I can actually connect numerous digital devices and turn them into a single IO-Link wireless device. I can take a digital multi-port hub, standard multi-port hub, doesn't have to be IO-Link wireless, and actually turn it with a bridge into IO-Link wireless, and now I'm communicating multiple sensors or actuators as a single IO-Link wireless device. The other way to integrate IO-Link wireless into uh, uh, devices is actually an embedded component. Okay, an embedded component means you take all the radio components, it's a system on module, 
that you had that has all the radio components and the IO link wireless protocol implemented on it and embedding it into the devices. You can see this on the right hand side at the bottom here. Two examples, a gripper on a robotic arm or any type of uh, other type of machine or tool. Or you can see here these jaws on this chuck which are basically holding work pieces on CNC machines. This is a great example. This here, this is a jaw and the component is embedded inside here actually communicating sensor data while machining. And I'll focus on this example in a second. So these devices now are communicating with the master at the center. The master is communicating wirelessly with the IO-Link wireless devices, but the master is also communicating both at the OT level and at the IT level. The master can communicate with the PLC, um, with industrial Ethernet protocols such as Profinet, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, OPC UA, but also communicate up north to enterprise applications, OE applications, MES systems, ERP systems via OPC UA or MQTT. So in a sense, it's replacing the standard wired master, but eliminating all the cables that are required between the devices and the master. <coughs> so let's talk about this example because the theme of this presentation is ultra reliability. And I want to show you with this example to explain how reliable this solution is. So one of the key problems with CNC machines and machine tooling is that you cannot measure at the clamping point today. These things are rotating at 6,000 rounds per minute. There's no cables that can be connected to the clamping tools that are holding the work pieces and the tools inside the CNC machine while it's rotating. So the measurement data of the force or vibration or any other data that's required for analytics or predictive maintenance or optimizing and tuning the machine cannot be uh, acquired today. It's data that's that, 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 that you get basically at other parts of the machine, which is not as precise as if you would have done it at the clamping point, okay? And of course, it's a very small footprint that needs to be embedded with harsh conditions, not just the rotation, but inside the CNC machine, a lot of flying metal pieces or uh, uh, fluids and lubricants inside the machine. So this is the challenge. Now, IO-Link Wireless actually solves this challenge. What was done here is that the manufacturer of these uh, uh, tools, in this case it's a jaw, but it can be a, a vise, a cone, a cylinder, in the same way on CNC machines, has embedded the IO-Link Wireless components inside this uh, tool, this jaw, it's battery operated, and it's actually communicating with a force sensor, a vibration sensor, and a temperature sensor. And it's capable of sending these messages at a, the low latency we mentioned while machining at 6,000 rounds per minute within the CNC machine. Okay? So this is another example where when we look at industrial sensors, we typically think about 24 volts. Um, and here, this is low voltage. So IO-Link Wireless is also not limited to the 24 volts. In this case, it's connected to a 1.8 uh, volt or 3.3, up to 1.8 to 3.3 volt. And in this case, with a low voltage uh, battery. <coughs> now, that is communicated to the master. And then the master is communicating this to the PLC. The PLC, in turn, can send messages back to optimize the machine and tune the machine. But also, you can send the data up to the analytics application that enables you to do the, uh, the business intelligence and the uh, predictive maintenance, whether the tools need to be changed or not. You can see here in this example on the right where you can actually get to a pattern because you have very precise measurements at the tooling point, And this pattern enables you to know whether the, the tool needs to be changed and when it's time to change the tool, rather than knowing that only in hindsight and then creating you know, additional downtime and unnecessary uh, maintenance. This also enables the automatic uh, setup uh, that you can have the part confirmation when you're putting it on the tool to be much more precise. Um, and also tuning the machine, as we mentioned, because you have the feedback from the PLC and back. So this is not just communicating the data uh, of the sensors, but also getting the data back to the machine. <coughs> so to summarize this, when we're looking at both machine builders and manufacturers and how they can use IO-Link Wireless, we're seeing a broad range of benefits. Um, one of it is adaptivity. 
We talked about adaptivity and flexibility. How do you reduce all those manual changeovers? By having things that are done in motion, controlling grippers, controlling vacuum pumps in motion, I'm able to do changeovers now in motion, and I don't need to stop the machine and have specific tooling in order to, be, uh, to change designs for different products or different form factors. So I'm completely adaptive and flexible. I can increase my capacity because everything is done in motion. I don't need to stop. Footprint reduction, less cables, less mounting accessories. The maintenance itself, less, uh, there's a less uh, need to actually maintain cables because of wear and tear. And what you've seen here is that actually uh, it's enabling applications that were not possible before. You know, this example is an application that you could not do before without a wireless system. Controlling grippers or vacuum pumps on movers on a smart conveying system is something that cannot be done with cables. So on one hand, we have cable replacement due to maintenance and footprint reduction and such. But on the other hand, we also have applications that simply could not be done before. And then the last slide here, really to summarize this, um, essentially, we are enabling the machines and the production lines to do more, both brownfield and greenfield. How do you take this real-time control that you can do now, control, not just monitoring, wirelessly, and apply it in the places that were not possible before, and how you can get those benefits that we were just discussing? Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabi, Daniele, Cort, Tigo, for the uh, very, very exciting presentation. Is there any question from the public? Do you have any question you would like to address, Mr. Daniele? One second, I bring you the microphone. So please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. What's your view on the IOLink wireless comparing to uh, industrial Wi-Fi and uh, 5G here? It's uh, competition or is it complementary? No, that's, yeah, that's a great question, actually. We, we get that asked quite a bit. I actually view this as very complementary. Because you know, as you saw in the diagram where you have the, the control level and the devices and the master, we see the, basically the machine communication in machine and on machine being IO-Link wireless focused on the IO. And then the communication up north supported with, uh, with Wi-Fi or with uh, 5G. Of course, there are other solutions you know, where uh, IO-Link wireless uh, is not suitable. For example, you take process manufacturing, right? And if you want to communicate by, like for a kilometer or two kilometers, then you should use LoRa One, prob you know, probably, and not IO-Link Wireless for those long communications, right? It's these applications, motion control, factory automation, where IO-Link Wireless is intended for, and uh, we also have partners actually where they take the master and actually integrate 5G and Wi-Fi to then communicate the data up north. Is there any other question from the public? So I think we're just reached the end of the time. Thank you very much, Gabi Daniele. Coatillo. If you have any questions, if you are interested in viewing some demonstration, please go to booth number eight, just here in the Industrial Wireless Arena, and they will be able to explain you, and you will be able to see and to, to realize how it works. Thank you very much again. Glad to have you in Thank here. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you, everyone.